Isn't this a beautiful place? It's called the Rudolfshütte and is situated near Caprun in Austria. Of course, it was almost 20 kilometers with over a thousand meters of climb to get there from the start. But in hindsight, that was only the warm up of the Kalser Tauern Trail, the 50 kilometer version of the Großglockner Ultramarathon. The initial climb had gone by in no time and felt easier than expected. Thunderstorms were predicted for the afternoon, but so far the weather had been splendid. We'd had an early morning start and the rising sun was nicely balancing our increasing altitude to provide ideal temperatures the whole way up. The trail had some rocky sections and a few small snow fields, but overall my experience of that first climb was as smooth as the glacial lakes. After the Rudolfshütte, there was a short but technical descent, leading into the second big climb of the day. Unfortunately, the sun kept getting higher in the sky, also during our descent. So the delicate balance between altitude and weather was quickly lost. It started to get a bit warm. And with the heat, the thin air, and maybe a suboptimal nutrition plan, that second ascent, though far shorter than the first, quickly threw me out of my comfort zone. Still, I wasn't too worried, because although there were more than 20 kilometers to go after the top of the second climb, pretty much all of that would be downhill or flat. So I figured going deep on the climb wasn't a bad strategy. The view from the top of the pass was amazing, but the beauty of it was soon overshadowed by the realization that running down that snow field was going to be quite a challenge. I have no real experience running in mountain snow. I had gotten through a few snow fields easily enough on the first climb, but they were much smaller and mostly flat. Now I had to find out by trial and error how you run down a slope of uneven crunchy snow. Coming down the snowy slope was one of the most exciting parts of any race I've ever done. Encountering completely unfamiliar terrain in the middle of an ultra is a truly thrilling challenge. Unfortunately, I'm a rubbish skier. After the snow field, I felt fine for about five minutes. I guess that's the time it takes for most of the adrenaline to disappear. And once that happened, my tank was suddenly empty. Even though the terrain was much easier than before, I could barely do better than walking pace. At this point, I stopped thinking about the big picture. I was about seven kilometers away from the next aid station, located at the far end of a reservoir, and in my mind, that became the finish line. Not that I planned to quit at the aid station. I just didn't think about what would come after. I simply did not have the mental space to plan beyond the singular goal of reaching the aid station. Even though by all reasonable measures the hard part of the course was behind me, I was so deep into my struggle that the miles ahead were too much for my mind to process. When I finally crossed the dams to arrive at the aid station, the only food or drink that looked appetizing to me was something I'd never had before during a run, and that I rarely consume at all. But given the situation, I was willing to take the gamble and follow my craving. So I gulped down several cups of coke. And I guess I did some other things at the aid station, because somehow I spent more than 20 minutes there. None of those other things was filming though. But I guess you don't mind seeing some of the way to the aid station instead. I wasn't really worried about the effects of running with a carbonated stomach when I drank that coke. Maybe because I did not have the mental space to worry about anything. And when I got back on the trail, I found myself moving forward quite well. With its explosion of sugar and dash of caffeine, the coke had resurrected me. Months later, I found myself in an airplane on a very stressful day, 
and whether I would get home that evening at all depended on making a very short connection. I was mentally preparing for the possibility of spending a night in the airport when drinks were being served. I ordered a coke. The first sip of it transported me back to that aid station at the reservoir. And suddenly, despite being in a cramped airplane seat with an unhealthy amount of travel anxiety, I felt a calm confidence, bordering on invincibility. Much like I did when running down the gentle slopes between that reservoir and the finish line. I went into a pretty deep hole during this one. And it might have been more luck than skill, but I managed to dig myself out of it. And I'm more proud of that than I ever could be of numbers like time and distance. The Kaiser Tower and Trail was an experience I won't easily forget. And Coke will never taste the same. Ah, jetzt eigentlich wieder besser. <laughs> Erfrischender Regen. Ich habe ein bisschen zweiten Abend gefunden. Ah, unterwegs war es schwierig. Ich hatte Veranstaltung. Super schön, aber ich hatte die Strecke wirklich unterschätzt. Aber du bist ins Ziel gekommen und das ist großartig. Gratuliere, Mats.